right, so I want to talk about predicting products here for some pretty simple carbonyl compounds. We have some ketones here. We have two identical molecules, two methyl cyclohexanone, that are going to undergo some reactions here. We have two different sets of reagents, and I want to predict the products for what's going on. We use two things to do this, uh, just some basic rules, and then we'll look at the mechanism behind that. So if you, if you didn't know the rules, you can look at the mechanism. So the first one we have here, we're going to use LDA in THF at negative 78 centigrade with some methyl iodine. And then in the second reaction, our first set of reagents here uh, is sodium ethoxide and in ethanol at 25 centigrade with methyl iodine. So what's going to happen here? Well, let's look at a couple things first. LDA is a big molecule. It's uh, LDA is lithium diisopropyl amine, which is going to look like this, lithium positive, and then our negative nitrogen with two propyl groups on it. So it's big, so it's going to you know, have steric consequences for that. And this reaction is taking place at low temperatures. So low temp is going to equal what? A kinetic product. And this reaction down here, well, we have methyl iodine for both of these, so that's going to be the same. So what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to end up adding a methyl group. That's what's going to happen. And this guy is taking place at 25 centigrade, so it's in pretty, pretty warm conditions or hot conditions. So we'll just say higher temperature is going to equal a thermodynamic product. All right, so we have our thermodynamic product. So this is what we can just look at to start things off. What's going to happen here? Well, we know that we, draw, we should draw in our hydrogens because there's going to be attack on alpha hydrogens in both of these reactions because these are, this is the type of ketone reaction we're working with here, the type of carbonyl addition reaction. So there's going to be one hydrogen here, and there's going to be two hydrogens here on this carbon. This guy is also, of course, the same molecule. It's going to look exactly the same. Now, there are hydrogens down here. Why am I not drawing them in? I'm not drawing them in because these guys are the only alpha carbons that we have. Okay? So here are the alpha carbons in the molecule. So it can only attack there. So what's going to happen? Well, we have our LDA, which is pretty big, so it's not going to want to attack where we have this methyl group because there's going to be some steric strain there. So we'll end up having to attack the hydrogens on this end and add our methyl group to the other alpha carbon. So we'll end up with this guy right here. And our added methyl group will be added to this. Well, that marker group will be added to this alpha carbon. So that's how things will look. In the second product, we have, we're going to, thermodynamic is going to select for the more substituted alpha carbon, and we don't have any kind of steric problems because we don't have a big reagent like LDA. So where are we going to add our carbon? Well, we'll add it to this guy right here, which is the more substituted carbon. So what we'll come out with is this guy right here. And our new carbon, well, that marker again, our new CH3 right there. So we can predict the products just by these rules without looking at any mechanism, but now we can go ahead and work through the mechanism in case you didn't, you know, know what was going on with all these rules, what's going to select for a kinetic product, what's going to be, you know, what well, LDA, and I have understand the steric hindrance issues and stuff with that. Well, we can look at the mechanism, and that will allow us to predict products just as easily. All right, so let's look at the mechanism. Let's do our first reaction first. So we have our compound here, our ketone, our 2-methyl cyclohexanone. And what are we adding? We're adding LDA. Well, we already have LDA over here, so we'll just draw the arrows from it. So what's going to take place? Let's get a round marker to show the electron flow. Well, we're going to have the alpha hydrogen, the alpha carbon over here is going to be the one that we said we were going to attack because of the size of LDA. So we have a hydrogen right here. The negative charge from the LDA is going to come 
and attack that hydrogen. What's that going to cause to happen? Well, these electrons are going to have to flip onto this alpha carbon to cause an internal carbanion to form. So, this will result in this compound. We have a lone pair of electrons here and a negative charge. And if it helps to draw in the other hydrogen that's still there, that's perfectly fine. We can do that. So now we have this. What's the next thing that's going to take place? Well, let's go to our next reagent here. We have methyl iodine. So we can go ahead and draw that. All right. And what will happen here? Well, the, uh, these negative electrons here will go and attack this methyl group. This iodine will accept those electrons, and we will end up with this. We have now gotten rid of that charge, and we have added our methyl group onto this carbon onto that alpha carbon. So we're done. This is the product that we predicted. It's a very short and simple mechanism. So next we can look at the mechanism for the thermodynamic product that would result when we use the non-sterically -steric uh, hindered reagents. All right, so let's look at the mechanism for this second reaction here. Now, if you notice, I have NaOET written up here, and I have NaOCH2CH3 written down here. They mean the exact same thing. They're both sodium ethoxide, but this is just much easier to write without having to write all the, the CHs um, out here in this mechanism just to make things go a little bit faster. So, we said with this one, because of our reaction conditions and because we don't have a, uh, issues of steric hindrance with this methyl group, when we are uh, reacting at this temperature for a thermodynamic product, thermodynamic products are going to attack at the most substituted alpha carbon in the ketone. So, what's going to happen? These hydrogens aren't going to matter. This hydrogen is, and actually, let me do this. Let me draw it on the outside just to make it look a little bit easier for what we're doing. Okay, and I'll write down that that's a CH3. So the negative charge, this is, of course, going to ionize in solution. We have our positive uh, sodium because what did we put it in? We put it in CH3, CH2OH, or EPO, ethanol, EPOH, ethanol. So the negative charge in this is going to come over here and attack this alpha hydrogen. The electrons from the alpha hydrogen will go back onto that carbon and we will get a very similar thing to last time. We will have a carbanion formed right here. Alright, so notice there's no H written on the inside like last time because we, we would have hold on to the negative charge. So now we have our negative charge here, our carbanion is formed. What's the next step? Well, let's look at our next reagent, CH3I, or methyl iodine. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll put in our methyl iodine. And I probably should have shown what happened to the iodine in the last reaction. I'll, I'll go ahead and show that this time. The negative charge here is going to come and, all these markers are terrible, it's going to come here and attack the carbon on the CH3. The electrons will be kicked onto the iodine, and here is what we'll end up with. We will get this guy right here. Plus. Uh, minus. All right, so we'll end up with this ketone. This is a 2,2-dimethyl uh, cyclohexanone. 2,2-dimethyl cyclohexanone. And we will have an iodide anion because we kick those electrons off the in between the bond from the CH3 and the I onto that. So here's what we end up with, and it's exactly what we looked at right over here. So those are the pretty simple mechanisms for that. So two ways to predict products, basic rules about the thermodynamics of the reaction, and looking at steric hindrance and such with the reagents you're looking at, as well as uh, going through the mechanism. So that's pretty simple.